بارك الله فيك الله جاوب هاتي I had a question for uh, for Sabur actually concerning the uh, please go ahead the fossil records and my question is basically I hear that uh, there 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 are fossil there are fossil evidence for Neanderthals and uh, that the there's also genetic evidence no, that indicate no we we have a living we have a living example <laughs> <laughs> No, but my question is, what are what are really Neanderthals? Because they're described as different, a distinct species uh, within the human genome. Um, I share... for your question, uh, yeah. Mahmoud. Uh, it's not that they're within the human genome. It's that they would say within the hominid uh, family, there is uh, different branches. So they'll say Denisovans, Homo naladi, Homo erectus, Neanderthals, and so on and so forth. The existence of such uh, what scientists would consider human, but we wouldn't say human because our definition of human is bunny Adam. Their definition of human is not that. It's They would consider all of these humans. The existence of these things are not a theological challenge to us. Uh, we can believe these are cre creations of Allah that existed, that lived and died and did not have the capabilities that modern uh, bunny Adam do. Um, and, you know, we can just accept their existence and we don't really have to take it any further than that. Okay, so Thank from you so my understanding... Much. Go ahead, sorry. Go ahead. From my understanding, there is no... Uh, there is nothing that the Qur'an says about the fact that there are nothing else apart, apart from humans. Well, Allah says He creates that which you don't know. So Allah doesn't mention, say, the trilobites or the dinosaurs or the billions of species uh, altogether, if you look at how many uh, we've been around for around 4 billion years on this earth, so all of the different you know, uh, different uh, types of species that have ever existed Allah doesn't mention those in detail, what Allah does say is everything's made by Him so, Okay guys, so, so we received a, I have to interrupt Hashem, oh, I, I can't mention the name, it's an anonymous donor I almost mentioned the name, but they basically gave us one thousand and one pounds. Allah, alhamdulillah. And the, the Allah. comment was one extra pound. May Allah bless you guys and grant you success in this life and the next. So they gave us one thousand and one pounds. Alhamdulillah. May Allah grant Allah. them the best Allah. in this life and the best in the life to come. Allah loves odd numbers. Maybe that's why they did it. <laughs> Allah. So, brother Mahmoud, that that's basically the answer. Um, you know, we just we just uh, don't. Uh, this is the other thing. I have this uh, uh, video on my channel. Uh, time for some selfish uh, uh, promotion. Uh, it's called "Was Homo Erectus Hanafi?" Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the reason why I had that video is to show that a lot of the questions that are being asked by Muslims and non-Muslims when it comes to Darwinism are totally irrelevant <laughs> because it doesn't really matter. What matters is that we can show it's not absolutely true. We can show that even within. The, the field of science with methodological naturalism, even then there are issues and then we can also point out other philosophical challenges, but all of the rest of these issues are cul-de-sacs. They don't lead anywhere. We just need to show that the Quran is not undermined by these things and, and why the Quran is true. And that's it. Okay. Jakalakha. Jakalakha, Mahmoud. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Brother Muhammad. Allah okay, so uh, I, just, well, yeah. Yeah, I just want to put up, this sounds like a... Could be an atheist. Uh, I'm dodging the question. They're a challenge to your theology. You're, I'm going to okay. send the link. Okay. You're more really than welcome respond. to join us. When you, when you do respond, keep it very short and snappy. Because well, we that, are... it's not a challenge to theology because that's equivalent of saying, like, you know, some species uh, is a challenge to theology because it's just another species. If there are distinct species, how do, when Allah says he scattered beasts and animals and he's made all types of animals and beasts, that's not a challenge to anyone's theology. You want it to be a challenge to people's theology because this is your Genesis story. This is the atheist <laughs> Genesis story. Yeah. Like Sabu told me that. This is uh, this is your Genesis story. And if your Genesis story is not complete and true, you're going to get upset and you're going to cry. And you don't have anything else because you have a vacuous existence. Not all of you, some of you at least, because you have a meaningless existence because your life is just based on random electrons whizzing around. the non-conscious and blind. Non-conscious means they're not aware of themselves or aware of anything outside of themselves and they're blind, which means there's nothing int intentionally directing them anywhere. That's the basis of your entire existence. 
And you're just trying to hide that by trying to argue and create red herrings. Come to the point. The point is, are you willing to have a worldview that doesn't explain the strong intuitions about purpose of life, uh, the rationality of the universe, the mathematical structure of the universe, the fact that you have inner subjective conscious experience, the fact that you believe in some objective moral truths. Do you, do you want to adopt a worldview that makes sense of that or doesn't make sense of that? Atheism, philosophical naturalism doesn't make sense of that at all. And your petty little question is actually evidence of that. Your question that is misplaced and misunderstood and just exposes the fact that you just love your Genesis story. You're just blind faith. You're muqallid, as we say in Arabic. That's right. Muqallid, <laughs> blind, blind, uh, blind following.